now as we have already seen how to set up now what we will do is i will just try to show you like how i did push to code to the gitlab so as uh, we have already explained i have just created two different uh, origins and you can see here git remo git remote add so i'm adding uh, another remote for this repository git remote add origin and if you see the origin name here it is gitlab personal because there can be different different account gitlab github bitbucket and uh, you need to create alias in your uh, ssh config that okay uh, because gitlab may be your personal gitlab can be your organizational repository gitlab can be your third party so how can you isolate them you can create these alias in the ssh config named as a gitlab personal gitlab third party Git, gitlab organization and you can point them to a different different public key that you, i have already shown you in my previous example that this is all these things are happening and here you just need to clone it so this is your ssh url but what you will do is you will replace the gitlab.com with the gitlab personal because gitlab personal is already configured in your ssh config and that is pointing to particular ssh key so here i will try to explain you also that how this config look like here you can see the third section is gitlab personal is pointing to gitlab.com and is using this particular identity ssh key gitlab tarun personal this is the private key public key we have already uploaded on the gitlab personal account so this is how the whole thing really works when you set up a github multiple github profiles by setting up a multiple public keys and private keys okay now what we will do is now we have a code on the gitlab so we can try to understand uh, how this whole setup is going to work this is a gitlab personal.pub and private keys which we have already uploaded to the respective platform like gitlab.com for your personal account github.com for your private account these accounts can be either on the same platform or maybe a different platform maybe for your projects organization project you are using github that you are using some ssh keys so obviously you are not going to copy the same ssh keys uh, for your personal uses and the, for your organization uses the same ssh key you can create a new ssh key and you can copy uh, the public keys to your respective uh, platforms now uh, the next thing we are going to do is we will try to see the what all ssh keys we have here you can see i created a personal and i created a for office use the the public key and private key pair okay so i will just go back to my project and here you can see i have two remotes i mean that's my personal project and i i am pushing the same project to github and same project to gitlab so i can just do git push origin main git push org main org org is actually remote which is pointing to uh, the gitlab and origin is the remote which is pointing to the github here I will just do some change and I will try to push this code to GitHub and the GitLab. So I'm just trying to push a dummy commit. So git status, git add, git commit. Uh, okay, there are many more changes. Let that's fine. I will do git commit. So let's uh, create a prettier write first. Git add and then git commit. So we can create a commit and then I will just try to push this so that I can show you that this is going to the GitHub and this is going to uh, GitLab. So here I can do git push org main which is going to GitLab and git push origin main so you can see here this url is a gitlab okay then i can do git push origin main also that will push the code to uh, github okay so now we have a code available now we can set up ci cd so here these are the basic things we are trying to explore how to set up ci cd in the gitlab you need to have a dot gitlab dot dash ci dot ymf this is a very basic file we have added 
as a GitLab CI. Yeah. These are the different stages and these are the jobs. And in the jobs, we are specifying the stages like test, build, uh, deploy, all these stages you can define. And you can see pipeline syntax is correct. Sometimes it's a YML. So if you are making any error, the pipeline won't run. Here these are these are doing nothing. It's just doing echo hello world or something. So here you can see it is using this executor image. Image. What are these GitLab runners? So whenever we build the project, whenever we set up the CI CD, either we can specify our own Docker image or GitLab will spin up its own these GitLab runners. The GitLab runners are like the systems or you can see the shared runners which are publicly available. I mean these are not dedicated to your account but these are publicly shared so whenever you push something and if the, there is a GitLab runner is freely available in the pool they will assign to you and they will give the it's it's either a instance machine or you can also specify that you want to spin a, a GitLab runner with a docker container if you are specifying any docker image like node 16.18.0 or here we are not specifying any uh, docker container image it's just like a plain GitLab CI YML file just to play around and here these are the steps it is performing it's a build test um, lint unit test integration test or something like that and then deploy so it's doing nothing much because we don't have much on the GitLab it's like a plain YML file <coughs> which is just uh, doing a script <coughs> So here if we see what do we have here we have a, a stages like list of stages build test deploy then these are the jobs build jobs unit test job integration test job deploy job and we have these scripts scripts are nothing but a linear command script command like which are executable be bash command echo sleep you can install some package you can just run uh, some npm script command so all these tasks are there. This is like a very basic YML file which comes in handy. And this is how the whole things really happens. We have these different different jobs which are executing the different different stages. And the stages execute in the same instructions. You can have another stages also. Let's say what you are calling it is a cache. Uh, check coverage job. Just another jo job which I'm adding which is pointing to the stage test. So stages we have kind of fixed. We can be using only these stages which are already defined on the top. Okay, and then no, no lint issues. Fine, this is already done. You just commit this. So this is your basic CI setup which we are committing. And then similarly you can have another jobs. Job name can be anything. It just you need to have a proper stage assigned to it. So stages are test, uh, build, deploy, all the the stages which has been defined on the top you will be using only those same stage like build test validate uh, or deploy so now validation is correct pipeline syntax looks good uh, we can just check the the pipeline so here you can see now these three things are uh, executing parallelly i mean first check coverage then run validation because all these things are coming in the validation then there is a deployment so all these are stages so if you are using one stage in a multiple jobs, all those jobs will run parallelly. So what do you see here? Here you see the stages which are build, deploy, validate and then these are the jobs. If there are five jobs has been created for validate or for, for test, all will be executed parallelly. And these jobs, these stages will execute from top to bottom. This is a sequence and these are like the, your shared runners which GitLab is using and that is available to us that is executing our code. Okay, you can also add register your own private runner if you want to speed up things. And these are the CI CD variables. Once we have actual deployment of a microservice, we will add a pro uh, environment variables like database URL, uh, some access key, token keys, and all which we'll put inside the environment variables. And here, environment variables, you can also specify a file or the variable. So inside file, you specify the environment name and put all the the variables are for that file here so this is the variable where, where you need to specify key and value otherwise you can also specify the file and here you can specify the environment key can be your the environment name which is development production or staging or and all in the value you will specify all the environment values you wanted to put inside the file
So if you're setting up the file, the key can be environment name like development, production, source, staging. And in the value, you can just specify the key value pair. Node env equal to development, production, or rc, staging, something like that. And you can see it is added and you can edit them. So these environment variables you can access in the CI. So CI has these predefined variables like the CI commit, CI commit message, CI token, all these standard environment variables you can access. And here you can protect the branch. First of all, because if you are running a CI against a branch, if I wanted to run a CI whenever I, I do pull, pull request, merge request and commit, then always make sure that that branch is protected so that that, can, that branch when it runs CI, it should be able to access these uh, GitLab private variables. Okay, this is very simple task which is being executed. Now, the what are the core things on the GitLab CI? I mean, from the documentation, you will understand more. But these are the core building blocks for a GitLab CI. Stages, the jobs, and we have already seen in the first example, there are multiple stages and these multiple jobs were defined. And individual jobs has them some script code like okay i need to run the npm run test npm run build npm run deploy npm run prettier all these are called script script can contain a basic uh, shell script it can be a echo statement sleep statement you might be installing some packages you might be installing some library all those things will come in, come inside a script whatever you executable bash script you can put rules rules are uh, you can define some rules for running the ci okay you i want to run the ci whenever you push the code in the pipeline whenever you are merging and new adding a new commit to the uh, default branch or whenever you are creating any tag or whenever you are pushing any and uh, merging any whenever, whenever you are creating a merge request pull request or whenever you are merging the code to the develop branch or the the default branches which you have so these are called stages build deploy test validate all these will be considered as a stages and then respective to these stages you will create a jobs and each and every job will have particular stage assigned to it so if we talk about simple stage here build job in the first second line we have a stage because build job is having a stage build and then you can also either you can use a default uh, machine or you can specify the node image here i am using image node and these are the script scripts are nothing but executable scripts uh, here it can be npm script npm install npm run build npm run test npm ci and the artifacts whenever you are doing build there are some kind of artifacts will be which will be generated and these artifacts can be used by other job so that is what the whole ci look like whenever you do the build there are the artifacts which you can cache and those artifacts can be used by another script or another job so there can be another job like okay build job then we have a test job stage can be test let's say i will change this to the lint job where it is check, checking the prettier for the code npm run prettier it will check okay if there is any prettier and you can also make sure that this job should pass we don't need artifacts for this so these are multiple jobs we have a test job build job lint job and these jobs as a stages stage assigned and then you have a script script is nothing but executable statements and you can also assign the artifacts like for the build build will generate some artifacts that we will uh, store and that can be used uh, everywhere and the cache cache is important because what happens is all the javascript project which we all always need to do npm ci either it is a pnpm or npm you need to install all the modules and don't then you can store those node modules or the pnpm store or the npm cache as a cache in the gitlab cache so that other job can also access that cache extract that cache and whenever i do build because what happens is npm install npm ci can be a different job npm run build can be a different job npm run test can be a different job and once you set up once you do npm install those node modules i need while doing build those same node modules I need when I do npm run test. So those things, the node modules can be put inside a cache. That cache can be used in another job so that they can execute their task. We don't need to do npm ci, the whole bulk of download of node modules in each and every job. Once you do it, you can put that as a cache 
and the same cache will be available for other jobs so this is a plain and simple build job which is running i think this is pnpm install i'm trying to do and i know the reason why it is breaking because uh, here we don't have a pnpm command pnpm is actually a global module first we need to install on the on the node.js so first we need to fix that because this is a pnpm workspace so what we can do is we can just first install the the pnpm uh, how to set up the pnpm you can just uh, i will just try to see this and from here we can just take a little bit help so continuous integration for gitlab github actions and gitlab ci so this is how you need to do the build if it is if you are using pnpm we are not using npm here so what i will do is i will try to edit it i try to create a i try to copy the sample uh, ci yml just to play around with this and the build job is failing because we are expecting pnpm where pnpm setup is not even there so what it needs to be done is either you install this pnpm or there are two steps either you install the node.js and then install pnpm globally first as a default or as a before script so that other steps can already know that okay pnpm is there then i can run pnpm ci so here i mean this is provided by the the documentation pnpm store and here i'm just doing a build commit changes and now it will try to set up because now it will try to use this node image and it will try to get the installation done using pnpm ci so first we are installing pnpm it is using node executor image not some gitlab runner with the default uh, system it is pulling first what it and now you can see it is doing pnpm install as expected because we have already installed pnpm and pnpm install command will work fine because pnpm is there and now you can also create a cache so you can see the last line is creating cache with this so this cache can be used and this cache has been added as a pnpm store this cache can be used by other jobs by defining okay i need this dependency i need this cache to be used so that we will see in the further examples okay uh, that's it guys so this is all about what we are doing is setting up the gitlab and github and playing with the gitlab ci and github actions